皆さん、こんにちは。東京大学教養学部で、アレス、アレサ、フロープログラムの運営委員長を務めています。吉国博樹と申します。今日は、アレス、アレサ、フローという授業の紹介。これらのプログラムをサポートする、アレスラボや、駒場アカデミックライティングセンターをご案内し、最後に、アレス、アレサの学生の方々のプレゼンテーションをお見せしたいと思います。今日の世界では、学術の場において、英語という言語が優位な地位を占めています。このことは、英語を母語としない人々にとっては、新たな負担となっています。なぜなら、専門分野の知識、研究方法、議論の組み立て方、新たな知見のみならず、英語という外国語をマスターしなければ、自らの研究成果を世界中の人々と分かち合うことが難しい状況となっているからです。こうした状況を踏まえ、研究者として国際的に活躍するために、必要な学術的英語の基礎を習得できるように、東京大学教養学部前期課程では、アレス、アレサ、フローという3種類の必修科目が開講されています。これらの授業では、アカデミックライティングというものを学びます。その主な目的は、学術論文を作成する上での基礎、すなわち分析的思考、論理的な文章構成、説得力のある表現や叙述法を学ぶことにあります。アレス、アレサは、1年生全員が1学期間に修する必修科目で、独自に開発されたカリキュラムに基づき、少人数のクラスでこれらの技法を学びます。アレスは、理系の学生を対象とする授業で、学生自らが考案し、実施する実験を題材に、イムラット、イントロダクション、メソッツ、レザルツ、アンドディスカッションという形式に沿って、自然科学の論文を執筆します。また、国際会議に参加する際に求められる、口頭発表や、質疑応答のスキルも身につけます。こうした研究計画の立案、実験の実施、結果の分析や解釈といったそれぞれの段階で学生へのサポートを提供しているのがアレスラボと呼ばれる施設です。アレサは文系の学生を対象とする授業で人文、社会科学に関するテーマについて、論理的な文章を執筆し、高度なプレゼンテーションやディスカッションを行う方法を学びます。駒場アカデミックライティングセンター、コークと呼ばれる施設では、アレス、アレサにおける論文執筆をサポートするために、バイリンガルやマルチリンガルの大学院生が学生の相談に応じています。フローは7週間にわたる1タームの授業で、英語で論理的なディスカッションができるよう、スピーキング力を鍛えることを目標としています。アレス、アレサで培われた英語力を補完的に評価するための授業となっています。それでは、アレス、アレサ、フロー、それぞれの授業の特色と学生支援のための施設について、これから具体的にご紹介していきたいと思います。こんにちは。コンバーアカデミック・ライティング・センターのエゴボモンのクン・フェリックスです。ライティング・センターについて紹介したいと思います。ライティングセンターには日本語部門などいろんな部門があります。皆さんが入学したら、特にイエローセール、エゴ部門ではアレサレサ、そしてフローで出する学生をサポートしています
Wetting Sender war Jugo Kani Arimas, Jo, Schützenein und Josu, oh, Misseschimas. Todeska? Sakyu Space war Fukusuate, Koshitsu no Yona Busu ya Okina Teboromari, Murutunadumo, Kikimarimas. Igbo Monte war Writing or Support of Sudo Nijun in Nijono Shuta Garimas. Chuta war Tokyo Regaku no Shushikate ya Hakase Kate no Daigakui no Senpai de Academic Writing a Hokuina Nihonjin Gakse ya Iruna Kunikara de Kitakuro Uruxe Garimas. Writing Center de war Arasa Resa no Ego no Rombo ni Zoito no Suranga de Kimas. Chuta to Topic ya Thema Shiro no Kensako Hoho, Bose na do Iruna Kate de Detekuro, Gimon ya Kumari Kotunato ni Zoito Suranga de Kimas. So the Frono support to the tutor to present ya speaking no range of Naruga de Kimas. Writing Center de war Jiritsu Teki na Kakete o Sudatero Bashides. So not hammer writing center wa Minasan no Minasan ga Histori demo yori yoi rombun o Shippitsu de Kiro yo Kakete to no Taiwa o Tsuchita Saporto o Okonatimas. Zehi Nugakustara writing center o Nando demo Ryoshi Kurasai. Adigazumas Minasan Konichiwa. Alasu alasa flow program no kyo yi no Dieri Greg des. Korea wa Tokyo Dagaku Chinense no Hishu Kamoku de Ego de Okanoare Masu. Hikari no Ichinense wa Arasu de Grupu de Temo Kime Ken Kyubun Seki Oshite Kara Jibun de Ego no Rombu no Kaki Koto Hapio Oshimasu. Bunkaru no Ichinense wa Alasa de Jibun de Kimete Tema no Bunken Chosa to Ken Kyoshi te kara Ego de Rombu no Kaki Koto Haku Yoshimas Alasa to Alasa wa Ichi Semester Ju San Shuka no Kosu des Flo wa Ichi Tama Nana Shuka no Rebel Betsu no Communication Class de Presenya Debate on Ado Shimasu Kwashiku wa Alasu ka Alasu de Website o Kensaku shite mite kudasai Tokoro de Active Learning te nan de shoka Sore wa Daegaku G. Hatsuteki ni Gakushu ni to Torikumi, Mizukara Manabu Chikara o Sodateru Koto des. Tatweba, Kanshi no Arutema o Kimete Jibunde Kotai o Sagashimasu. Classmate Doshi de Discussion Chitari Tagai ni Taskei Nagara Manabu Katsuro Chitari Shimasu. Mutran Kyoin Tachiga Sono Processu Senpan Tekini Shikari to Sapoto Shimasu Alasa Rasa Flow Program no Kyoin wa Chusan Nimas Shushin Koku wa Juyan Ka Koku ni Watari Hanaseru Gengo wa Koke Juni ka Kokugo Gakushitsu ga Bunya ga Niju san Bunya ni wataru Hakushi tachi no sensei des Sensei tachi no Bogo wa Samazama so ste Kenkyu no Sekai de Eto Kyotugo Shi toste no Ego de to Kenkyo Shitari Koksai ga Kai de Hapio to Shitari Rombu mo Shupan Shitari Shimasu 
。授業は全部英語で大変かもしれませんが、様々なサポートが充実しています。英語全般のサポートは、コマーバーアカデミックライティングセンターで、アレス実験のサポートは、アレスラブでそれぞれ、大学院生の先輩が相談に乗ってくれます。では、早速実際のアラスとアラサのプレゼンテーションを聞いてみてみましょう。Let's first welcome a l e s s student, Koyanagi Mizuki, followed by a l e s s student, Miwa Hana. Can you imagine a situation where your daily life suddenly comes to an end? The topic of my presentation today is false accusations. Enzai in Japanese. Victims of false accusations are suddenly taken into custody for crimes they do not commit and cut off from their daily lives during interrogations and trial. Even if they turn out to be innocent after a retrial, family, job, and lifetime are lost to never come back. So, why do false accusations happen? One reason is false confessions. False confession is the statement to admit one is guilty of a crime, even though he is innocent. In addition to false confessions, false testimonies, which are prejudicial to the defendant, made by the defendant himself, can also contribute to false accusations. So, considering this phenomenon, the question is. How much confessions and testimonies told by the defendant should be believed and relied on in the court? I will first discuss this from the side that argues not to believe confessions and testimonies, and then from the side that argues to believe them. Firstly, I will talk from the side that argues not to believe confessions and testimonies. The main argument of this side is that false confessions are unavoidable. I will show you two reasons for it. One thing that might lead to false confessions is the physical and mental pain of interrogation. During interrogations, investigators tend to declare again and again that the suspect should be the criminal. Without resorting to violence or shouting, investigators create a framework. That the suspect is evil. Another terrible aspect is that investigators are not trying to make the suspect tell a lie. In fact, they truly believe that the suspect is the criminal and is just trying to protect justice. In other words, interrogations are stressful without the obviously inappropriate behavior of investigators. This means false confession is not something that could be avoided even if investigators try to. The other reason why false confessions should not be relied on is that humans' memory can be easily altered. During interrogation, as the original memory is recalled and recounted to answer the questions, the memory of that interrogation is added to it, and the original memory of the incident gets distorted. In addition to that, the wording of question can affect the defendant's memory. In an experiment conducted by Loftus and her colleague Yu in 1974, participants were shown a video of a car accident and then asked a question about the speeds of the car. They said that the cars were going faster when they were asked how fast were the cars when they smashed into each other than when they were asked how fast were the cars when they hit each other. Loftus et al. argued that. Humans' memory are rather like Wikipedia in that both the person himself and others can rewrite it. To summarize, the stressful situation and memory confusion can lead to false confessions and false testimonies, and this happens unconsciously. Therefore, confessions and testimonies should not be relied on in the court. Next, I'll talk from the opposite side.
How hard it is to prevent false confessions and false testimonies has been discussed so far, and it is almost obvious that there is no way to completely avoid them. However, isn't it quite reluctant to say to not believe confessions and testimonies is the right decision? In the first place, we have to be careful that no one knows until the end of the trail if the, if the defendant actually committed the crime or not. In the case that the defendant is a criminal, the confession and testimonies provided by the defendant is really important. Considering this fact, the decision to be made is to establish a system that detects false confessions and false testimonies instead of denying them. So, let's think about Japan's trail system that allows false confessions to induce false accusations. There are mainly two big problems with the trail system in Japan. Firstly, the current interrogation in Japan is like a black box. There is no recording of the interrogations and the defendant is required to go through interrogations alone without a lawyer. Therefore, only the defendant and investigators know actually what was said inside the room. To change this situation, the whole interrogations should be recorded. By this, the judges can objectively decide if the interrogation was held in a non-stressful atmosphere and if the wording of the questions were appropriate. The recording system allows the judge to detect false confessions and false testimonies. Secondly, there is a trend to stop research once the defendant says, I did it. If the judges continue to do research of evidence, they should find a contradiction between the defendant's word and other evidence. Then why don't they do that? One reason is because there are not enough judges in Japan, which means there are not much time that judges can assigned to one case. In addition to this fact, current Japan's trail system leaves it to each judge's discretion how strongly they request the disclosure of evidence to the police. Because of this, some judges limit the number of witnesses they examine or do not do enough requests of disclosure. To solve this problem, there are two possible systems that could be introduced. One is to increase the number of positions of part-time judges and make retired judges work, work sometimes. The other is to establish a law system with punishment to make sure that every judge do enough request of disclosure to the police. To summarize, if these systems are executed, the number of false accusations will decrease dramatically without denying confessions and testimonies. Now, I will conclude my presentation. I have discussed whether confessions and testimonies should be believed or not so far. The impossibility to prevent false confessions and false testimonies supported the position to not believe them. On the other hand, the usefulness of confessions and testimonies and the possibility to detect false ones by introducing new systems are the reasons to believe them. Though the two sides suggest completely different idea, there is a shared idea too. Both sides try to make a correct judgment and avoid false accusations. As long as the trail is something that judges the past event, which no one can see, how to get closer to the truth will keep on being the most difficult problem. There is no clear answer, so keeping on thinking is the best solution. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Mizuki Koyanagi. Today I'm going to tell you what I learned in Alex class. This information will help you think what the research is about. I'm going to tell you about three points. First, I'll tell you about the survey. Second, I'm going to tell you about peer review. Third, I'll tell you about writing the IMOLD paper, also known as IMRAD paper. Let us begin with explaining my survey experience to you. Our group investigated the correlation between the parental involvement in extracurricular activities and the usefulness of them. When creating a questionnaire, we took care of the links of the survey. It should take less than 10 minutes to complete it. 
we were unable to reduce the number of questions because there are so many factors. There are three categories of the activities, and in each category, we had to examine five factors. Instead, we met this limitation by turning all the questions into multiple choice questions. This is because it takes much less time to select the appropriate options than to type the answers. In the first place, the purpose of reducing time to complete a questionnaire is to prevent participants from quitting a questionnaire halfway. In surveys conducted by students, the number of participants is originally small. Furthermore, in surveys using questionnaires, participants are not viewed by the researchers, so they're more likely to quit it. I found this type of research requires a design that considers participants. Now you know what I learned in making a survey design. Next, I'm going to tell you what I experienced in the peer review. This is not my first time to do peer review. In high school, I sometimes did it with my classmates. At that time, I couldn't come up with any advice, nor could I have any lively discussions. Based on that experience, I didn't think this peer review would be important either. However, that was not the case. When I read other people's papers, I learned words and phrases, while I noticed some points to improve. At the same time, they gave me unexpected advice. I think not only improving English skills, but also learning how to write a paper and taking enough time to write it made the peer review more meaningful. Although skeptical at first, peer review allows us to mutually improve the quality of papers. Now I've told you about my peer review experience. Next, I'm going to tell you what I learned in writing the IMLD paper. During the peer review, I received feedback saying that some sentences are long and difficult to understand. In one sentence in the discussion section, there were 45 words. I also received comment that it was better to change how to divide the paragraph. I crammed so many things into a paragraph that it was difficult to follow the argument. The longest paragraph in my paper had as much as 17 lines. In addition, my paper had so many words. When I finished writing the first draft, the total word count was over 2,800, though it should be less than 1,700. So I made efforts to solve these problems by making sentences more concise. Long sentences, long paragraphs, and a long paper make the readers uncomfortable. At first, I only concentrated on the content of the paper, but I learned the importance of writing papers with the readers in mind. I've told you what I learned in Alice's class. First, I told you about survey questionnaire. I learned that as researchers, we should be considerate to the participants. Second, I told you about the peer review. I found that advice from peers can improve the paper. Third, I told you about the writing. I found that as writers, we should be considerate to the readers. These things mean that research cannot be completed by only one person. Research is completed only when there is participants who cooperate with it, colleagues who check it, and also readers who understand and apply it. I will probably have the opportunity to write an English paper again when I conduct scientific research in the future. In that case, I would like to make the most of my experience in this Alice class. 
That's all. Thank you for listening.